And this is where we say goodbye to Apple MacBook Pro, the 15 inch Apple MacBook Pro, because I can't really continue to work that way. So it's been fun, but it's time to say goodbye. So it's going away. This video is actually about this laptop, which is the um, MacBook Pro. And this particular MacBook Pro is actually not the new one, so it's not the 16 inch MacBook Pro. This is, let me just double check what year this is, okay? So I'm looking at about my Mac. So this is the 15 inch 2017 MacBook Pro. So this is a 3.1 gigahertz quad core i7. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM and it's got the built-in um, Intel graphics, but it also has that, the Vega, uh, what is it? Vega something graphics, I'll, I'll check here in a few. Um, and this has been my primary laptop for when I travel, even if I have to edit video and even if I have to edit 8K, which by the way, on this computer, it's, um, it's challenging. But it's also the computer that I use when I'm in the studio and say I'm editing something and I'm ready to render and I allow my iMac Pro to render, I then flip to this guy to continue working on whatever the next step is of that project, you know, like maybe my graphics or, or something like that, um, catch up on my email, and uh, you know other things respond to people's requests and stuff so this is what i do when i'm done working you know in my studio for the day typically in the 5 p.m ish hour i then pack this guy up bring him home and then i go into my home office plug it in and then continue to work if i need to um, which typically is when i catch up on all of my email and then manage my social media so this laptop serves multiple purposes for everyday computing tasks like email, social media, light renders like 1080 renders, no problem. Um, 4K renders in some cases, not really a big issue. So light general tasks, Photoshop, this is fine. When I'm working on larger edit um, projects, this has become, this as in my MacBook Pro, my 15 inch MacBook Pro, has become a serious bottleneck. And because this has become a bottleneck, I began to look for ways to enhance the life of the MacBook Pro. Now I'm gonna mention that I realize that a lot of professionals, a lot of people that are doing creative work have moved on to Windows-based PCs. And the reason why I don't and why my company doesn't is because we all work on either iMac Pros, 5K iMacs, or MacBook Pros and have for a really long time. So our storage is set up for Mac. <laughs> Um, our workflows are set up for Mac. We're just very comfortable in this ecosystem that Apple has created with all of their products. Almost everyone on, in the company has an iPad Pro. So anyhow, switching to a different ecosystem really means more investment in more technology for us, which is the main reason why we haven't done it. But as I mentioned, this started to become a bottleneck because as an example, we've been doing a lot more multicam work, right? We, for one of the projects that comes to mind that really just kind of put me over the edge was a multicam uh, project where we used three of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6Ks and my Red 8K Helium. So we brought that into the timeline. We did a rough cut. We needed to get that rough cut 
um, over to a client and the render, the project was two hours, right? So it was a two hour sequence and the render took literally all day, like 10 and a half hours. And that was on the, um, on the iMac Pro. So in the meantime, while that's happening, I, be, I worked on my laptop exclusively. And then I have another project that's also an 8K project and working, as I mentioned, in 8K on this computer is challenging. Rendering 8K on this computer, especially with my workflow, the way that it works is it comes into Resolve, we do a rough cut, we do the color, and then we um, export in Apple ProRes 422HQ so that we can then finish our edit and final cut. So that first part of the process, the process that was in Resolve, that then took four and a half hours for a 30 minute project export. That's rough. That was very rough. So that is what put me over the edge. My solution to it was, or at least my attempt at a solution to it, was to add an eGPU to my home setup, which I'll show you guys here towards the end of the video, so that the eGPU and then the built-in GPU on the, on the MacBook Pro could actually work together because Resolve takes advantage of multiple GPUs and then try to crunch out more renders that way while I'm tying up my uh, iMac Pro. That worked okay, but the biggest bottleneck now is the number of cores that are in this particular MacBook Pro. And this is where we say goodbye to Apple MacBook Pro, the 15 inch Apple MacBook Pro, because I can't really continue to work that way. So it's been fun, but it's time to say goodbye. So it's going away. To replace it, we got We got this guy. This actually arrived a whole week ahead of schedule and I haven't had time to open it. And I wanted to open it in front of you and then share again what it is that made me evolve into what it is now. So you guys have the backstory now. And of course, I'm saying goodbye to the 15 inch MacBook Pro and I'm going with the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And as I mentioned, we are deeply embedded in the Apple ecosystem, which is the main reason why we, I can't switch to some other brand. So the reason why I'm so excited about this is because This has a lot more cores. And as I mentioned, when I'm saying goodbye to the 15 inch, the number of core differences should speed up my renders, not just in Final Cut, but also in Resolve. And one thing that I discovered yesterday, um, because I finally decided not to be stubborn about it, if I'm totally transparent here, is that the new version of Premiere Pro the Premiere Pro 2020 version that they recently released, it actually is for the first time significantly faster for my workflows and the types of, um, the type of footage that I edit. So it is faster, in fact, on Canon EOS R footage. It is faster on C300 Mark II footage. It is faster on RED footage raw footage and of course um, it's not faster than uh, than what I get out of Resolve but it's way faster than it has ever been for me and maybe I should have checked into it a couple of versions ago but um, 
I had just had really, really bad luck, so I adjusted my workflow away from Premiere. And also, uh, I was kind of brutal to Premiere on Twitter a few times because it just, it kicked my ass. Like, I would work on a project, for example, that was a multi-episode project, and all of a sudden, it would freeze or it would crash. It wouldn't remember what I saved last. Um, it just created such a headache for me that I decided I'm not doing that anymore. So this looks very similar to the original one, but apparently this has more juice. So I'm glad they included it, of course. And I need to get this thing set up so we can hook it up and see what it actually does. All right, so let's clear this out. So I've, I've heard mixed reviews about people saying they can't feel the difference. I can tell you that I can absolutely feel the difference in weight between these two machines and size difference. Not that much bigger, at least it doesn't appear to be that much bigger. When I put it into my backpack, we'll see if in fact it fits or if it doesn't. Moment of truth. So I am firing this guy up. So as I set it up here, I'll just mention a couple of things. I never use the touch bar. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if anyone actually does use the touch bar, but other than needing to maybe adjust my volume, I never really use the touch bar. The escape key, that I do use because I also do write code. And then as far as the keys go, and I don't use, I'll show you guys, I don't use any protection or anything on the keyboard here. Um, I never had issues with that either. In part, it could be because I, as I mentioned, I use, I dock it. Um, not really with the docking station, but I put it on my desk and then I use a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. But when I am, in fact, in my studio, at that point, I do physically type on it. Um, and I never had an issue with the keyboard or if I'm on a plane and I'm working, I've never had an issue. But apparently some people have. I originally had planned on taking this entire week off so that I could run benchmark tests against these two with real actual projects that I worked on and then give you guys access to those files so you can see exactly what it is that I'm talking about when I'm doing the renders because something like Bruce X or Cinebench or any of those, those, don't those tests to me don't reflect my workflow and the types of things or projects that I work on. So while the benchmarks are terrific so that we can see what the performance differences are, I'm more interested to see how it is that my life is going to improve. And I think that that's uh, of value to all of you who are gonna drop more than $4,000 on a laptop. So what I'm gonna do today, because today's actually my first official day off in that I don't have anything on my calendar. I will go through those tests and I will upload some additional videos talking about how these two compare so that you can get a sense um, based on, again, my workflow, how that might fit into your workflow and whether in fact it is worth it for you to upgrade. <laughs> so my Mac is just gonna restart itself apparently. Is that a good sign or is it more of the same? Let's hope that it just had to do with maybe joining a new Wi-Fi network. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I've never seen this before where it just stops in the middle of the setup process and then reboots itself. Yeah, it's making me start right from the start. That's weird. I didn't go for the eight terabytes of storage on this laptop. And the main reason for it is that when I am traveling and I'm working on projects 
and we have footage that is coming in from cameras and we're using the laptop to copy the footage, I would hate to have all of my footage on any one system because that one system could fail. So we have to use external drives and we use those Samsung T5 drives and we make two copies of every card for every camera that we use and then we clear the cards so that we could use them the next day. If I had all of that on my laptop, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the confidence that my project wouldn't have or couldn't have any issues. And when somebody is paying you to travel and then to deliver, um, that's a luxury that I can't take. So eight terabytes was overkill for me anyway for a, any single computer, but then why spend the extra money on that when in fact our workflow will not change. We will always need to use external hard drives. Finally, this is finishing the setup. Oh my gosh, it just takes forever. But hopefully it is totally worth it. Okay, so hopefully this is gonna work out. But this is my office space when I'm working here at home. And as you can see, there are, there's more than one computer here. That's Bert's space. So essentially we share office space when we are at home. And this is how it is that I, I know it's a little messy, so sorry about that. But I use these HD6XX headphones when I'm editing video because they are terrific. So that's how that's going to be used. And I plug it straight into my laptop. And then this Thunderbolt 2 um, hard drive is actually connecting directly to my RAID array, which is under the desk. And this other um, Thunderbolt 3 cable is going to be connected to my eGPU. The eGPU is sending two uh, DisplayPort signals to this Dell 8K monitor. And if you want to know more about the Dell 8K monitor, let me know and I'll surely make a video. I will give you a little bit of a spoiler <laughs> in case that sparks your interest a little bit more. Before I had an 8K monitor, I said things like, I cannot see any real difference between Canon C200 RAW and RED 8K RAW. And that may not be as accurate as I thought now that I own an 8K display. So we can explore that in the video. If you guys are interested, leave a comment. Um, and then we will, you know, add it to the production schedule. So I'm almost set up back the way that I had started. 8K display, we're good. Scaled, more space, that's good. It's working, so looks like, looks like we're all set. So this is an 8K display with eGPU. And now all I need to do is install all the software so that I could actually start doing the render test and the benchmark test based on my projects and then share them all with you. So if you're interested in seeing those, be sure to subscribe. And if you enjoy this type of content, you know, do let me know, it is appreciated. And again, a big thank you to every single one of you who have been a part of this channel um, throughout the years. I just really appreciate all of you. Until next time, I'm Carlos with me and Q helping you guys compete in today's web economy. Take care.